We are back another day, another sports card video. Friends, welcome to the channel. We are gonna talk about loans today. Aura, like take out a loan. Maybe. Yeah, you can, take, you can take a loan on stuff. Like I bought my collection all the time, all my high end stuff, because if I ever need a loan, within a day they can process a loan. That's the benefit of having everything vaulted, right? It's right at your fingertips to get a loan. How big of a thing was loans? Were loans? Was, were? Grammar, police, coming in, hot. Better alive. You're coming with me. How much did leverage play in high prices on high end cards or even the mid end kind of moving up to the high end? Thanks very much for joining guys. Before I get started, huge shout out to today's video sponsor, DC Sports 87. You might be thinking, man, I need to sell some cards on eBay, but I don't wanna be dealing with all of the back and forth, the refunding, the listing and the shipping and all the stuff. Just ship the cards off to DC Sports 87, give them a shot. There's a one page form. You literally just put your name, email address, send the cards, easy peasy, tracks all live on the website. So as soon as auctions end, people pay, the money becomes available. It's a one business day turnaround time for them to get payment out to you. It's a very simple process. I've got about 60 cards over there with them currently. So if you want, check out DC Sports 87. All right, so there's been a lot of talk recently in the sports card world, really globally. Consumer spending on credit cards is always kind of a hot topic. You can look and see credit card debt at all time highs, and then it comes down and this and that, but a lot of people leverage their daily life on credit cards. It's a fairly normal occurrence in society to carry some debt. And look, I mean, you've got a lot of credit card strategies where you've got cash back type stuff where you put it on the card and then you pay it off after each month and you can get kind of some nice benefits that way, whether it be airline miles or cash back. So there's ways to game that system if you're really, really disciplined. And that is the key there. That's the key thing, I think in life really, if you are really disciplined, whether it be with your money, whether it be working out, whether it be with cards, whatever we're talking about, being disciplined is key. And so it's no different here. And I think it's been, it's been tough if you look back. I mean, myself included, I've had struggles with impulse buying and controlling, you know, spending and, oh, okay, I'm getting paid on Friday. So, you know, how much do I have in my card account? And I'm buying stuff on Tuesday, Wednesday to pay for it on Friday. And so I've had to really kind of dial back, kind of look within here in 2023 and figure out a better system for that. It has gotten better. I am selling a lot more, which is helping to kind of offset buys. I do think that this is kind of an ongoing you know, thing for people. And it's not even just people that you know are, are working paycheck to paycheck. It's also people on the high end as well. And that's where I think this is kind of an important topic is PWCC, it looks to be that their kind of downfall and the need to sell to fanatics was due to their loan program. Again, I don't have insights into the other parts of their business. Maybe that their other parts of their business were struggling, but it really kind of looks like their website was functioning well. They had a lot of users, buying, selling, whatever. Um, but really the, the big thing with them was is they had a loan program. They were a little bit more aggressive than maybe they should have been on the loan side. Again, don't know how big of a part of their business that was. Alt just came out. They've actually, it's kind of, it's interesting how Alt does some things because PWCC is, you know, dealing with with this loan issue with these loans, and then Alt almost comes out as a, on a market as a marketing plan. I've seen stuff on IG about taking out loans, and then also seen stuff about hey, we've got twenty one million dollars of loans, almost as if hey, you can you can count on us. And look, maybe Alt structured their loans a lot differently than PWCC to where it does work. But however you slice it, taking leverage against stuff it's usually not a great deal for the person that's taking the loan out. Whether you're taking a loan out against you know, your house, typically anytime you're taking a collateralized loan against an asset, which cards being an alternative asset, it's different than taking a loan out of home, uh, a home loan you know, against your home. Even that is a little bit like, ah, makes you kind of grimace a little bit. But taking loans out against you know, luxury watches or cards or you know, a boat or something, collateralized loans can be really, really tricky unless you've got kind of a set game plan. Maybe you already have the funds in place to pay it back, but you're taking out this kind of short-term leverage to be able to do something else, but then you're gonna pay it back you know, in the next month or two months. However you slice it though, you know, taking leverage against against anything can, can be a big challenge. And so that's kind of the, the question mark. When you look at the high-end card market, and I'm not really talking about high-end like 52 tops mantles and stuff that are selling in the millions. I'm talking about more of five-figure and low six-figure cards because I think that that is where it's most prevalent. 
you know, buying a $20,000 card, buying a $50,000 card, maybe even a $100,000 card, taking out loans, bundling, you know, loans to then buy these cards. I, I think that really the big money is is not doing that necessarily. It could be wrong, obviously, but I think that, you know, there's certain collectors out there that just have a million bucks that they can plop down, you know, on these items. Or if they are taking leverage, they might take leverage, but they've got 20 million in the bank to where if something goes sideways, they can cover that. I think it's more of, you know, guys that are really trying to level up, got caught up maybe a little bit where they're like, oh man, I got to get into that card or, or these particular cards. I don't have the funds now, but I should, I can do this or that or whatever, move some things around. But in the meantime, to get that card, because with a lot of the rare cards, we know this is like, it might only come up for sale once a year, once or twice a year, maybe even every couple of years, you don't see them pop up very much. And so I think that's where you've seen kind of a mad scramble over the last couple of years. And maybe even still, you know, it's happening. So the biggest thing is, is the fine print in these agreements. And we saw that, I saw where, you know, PWCC, where you're, you're underwater on these cards or whatever that you've leveraged, they're they're now selling off your other cards that are in the vault, you know, to cover that to cover that loan. And some people might say like, oh my gosh, that's not fair. Why would PWCC be able to take these other cards? It was in the agreement, or they wouldn't be able to. They wouldn't be doing it. I'm certain of that. I'm certain it's in the fine print of their loan to where it's like, hey, if you can't cover this, then we're going to take other cards that you've got, other assets that are not necessarily tied to this deal, to be able to cover your part of the loan. It just makes sense that that was probably in there. And so the fine print on these deals, it's not just the interest rate, which I, I doubt these loans had really favorable interest rates, but there's also kind of the, those other, you know, those fine print elements to it. You know, can they attach other assets? These are important things. And not even just going out and getting like a PWCC or an alt loan, but just a credit card. Look, credit cards, it's mind boggling to me. My, my 19 year old just went to college and she applied for her first credit card. So I'm thinking like, okay, she'll probably get approved for like 250 bucks. That was my first credit card. It was a $250 limit. And then you kind of like move up from there, you make your payments and slowly they build up from there. And I understand, look, that was what, 25 years ago, 20 years ago at this point, it's different times, you know, fine. But her credit limit is $1,500 right out of the gate for a student card, you know, cause she's a, a, a university student. And I'm just thinking like, man, that is an unbelievable balance to be able to give a 19 year old that has zero credit whatsoever. So let alone somebody that has been working, that is that is older, you can, there's some big credit limits out there now to which makes this a little more scary, especially as we've moved into a higher interest rate environment where, you know, you're not necessarily getting favorable credit card loan terms on that interest rate. You just have to be really, really careful. And so I guess that's, that's the big question right now is, how many cards are sitting on loan or, or leveraged against, and how many of those cards over the next six to 12 months are still gonna hit, hit the market? Because I know this has happened. We've seen examples of this where people just have to sell off. They've gotta put it on auction, or they've gotta do private sales, quick private sales, and maybe take a little bit of a loss on it, or whatever, or a lot of a loss, to then become whole. It's just part of kind of, I think, what we've seen over the last couple of years, but it wasn't necessarily as out in the open, you know, two years ago, now it's all coming to the forefront. So again, kind of a big question mark there is, is how much money is tied up in leverage? How many of these cards are just gonna have to be auctioned off just to get whatever people can get to satisfy these loans? All right, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is this a big issue or is this a smallish is issue? You know, where it's like five to 10% of high-end cards and the other high-end cards have been paid for by the deep pockets out there and this isn't much of an issue. I'd, I'd be curious to know if anyone has any, any more information on this, if you've heard you know, any other information as far as just numbers as to how much, you know, has been loaned out against. I would be, I'd be eager to hear it. All right, guys, stay healthy, stay awesome. And I will talk to you again later.